All right. Today we are going to talk about our um, exponential logarithmic function. So we're going to talk about a population model. It says if a population P is changing at a constant percentage rate R, so R is the percentage rate that the population is changing by, T is time, and P sub naught is called the initial population. And make sure you express R as a decimal, and T is time in years. Okay. Now, if R is greater than zero, then we have an exponential growth function. And its growth factor is the base of the exponential function 1 plus r. On the other hand, if r is less than 0, then we have a decay function. Okay, so here we go. It says, tell whether the population model is an exponential growth function or exponential decay function. And find the constant percentage rate of growth or decay. Okay, so if I look at my formula down here, my p of t... Okay, so P sub naught has to be this, my 1 plus R has to be this, and then my time is that. So what this says is that my 1 plus R equals 1.0136. So if I get R alone, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and I get R equals 0 0.0136. That's positive, which means this is a growth function. Okay? And then what does it say? It wants to find the constant percentage rate. So there's my rate right there, but we express, in, when we use it in the formula, we use a decimal, but rate is a percent. So if I move this twice, my growth rate is going to be 1.36%. Okay? So for Detroit, again, if I use my formula, P of T equals P sub naught, there's my initial population. This is 1 plus R. To the t. So in this case, my 1 plus r equals 0 0.9858. And if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get r equals, give me just a second, I need a calculator. We have. Sorry, that was across the room. 0 0.9858 minus 1, and we get a negative 0 0.0142, which means since my rate is negative, this is a decay function. And to get my rate as a percent, move it two places. My decay rate is negative 1.42%. Okay? Oh, I forgot I animated this. There we go. All right, so it says decide whether the function is exponential growth or exponential decay and find the constant percentage rate of growth or decay. So hit pause, come back when you're ready, and hopefully you got one. So there's my piece of naught. There's my 1 plus r. So 1 plus r equals 0 0.876 minus 1 minus 1. I get r equals 0.876 minus 1 is negative 0.124. As a percent, move it twice, and you get a rate of negative 12.4%. Okay? All right, same thing. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. There is my piece of knot. There's my 1 plus r, which equals 1.08. So minus 1 minus 1, r equals 0.08, which is positive, which means it's growth. Two places over would make it an 8% rate, growth rate. All right. So now we're going to write an exponential function. Sorry. Um, oops, did that go forward? Okay, so we have to write an exponential function. Well, here they're giving me the initial value, which is p sub naught, and they're giving me my rate, but again, when we plug it in, we have to use it as a decimal, so that's 0 0.023. So if I plug those in for p sub naught and for r, my function becomes uh, 52 
times 1 plus my r to the t. So if I simplify inside parentheses, I get 52 times 1.023 to the t. And there's my function. Okay? All right, so if we do this one, all right, we have an initial mass of 15 grams, so that's my piece of knot. My rate is a negative 2 over would be 0 0.046. That would be my rate. So if I do my 1 plus r, I'd have to do 1 plus a negative 0 0.046. And if I do 1 minus 0 0.046, I get 0.954. So 1 plus r is, one, or is 0.954. Okay, so if I change my piece of knot to 15 and my 1 plus r to 0.954 to the t, there's going to be my function. You should put a zero in front of there. Okay? Alright, so now we're going to be talking about when we double something every so often or when we cut it in half every so often. And the, the trick here is when your rate is like doubling or halving, then we already know our base. If you're doubling something, my base is going to be 2. If you're halving something, my base is going to be 1 half. So, for this one, we have my a sub naught, initial mass. Anytime you have that sub naught, that means the starting, the initial point. Okay, so my a sub naught is 0 0.6, and my rate is 3. So, if we plug those in, I get my function is 0 0.6 times 2 to the x over 3. Okay? And then if we are having stuff, okay, again, here's my a sub naught, and here's my rate every 32 hours, okay, so I would have my function is 17 grams times my base one half because we're having, and it's going to be x over 32, okay. All right, so hit pause, come back and do this one. And I hope you got number three. If you did not, let's look at why. Here's my initial value, a sub naught is 35. My one plus r equals 9%, right? Which would be 0 0.09. So to get r, Yeah, 1 plus 9. Oh, no, I'm sorry. So if R, sorry, my bad, I'm going backwards. If my R is 0 0.09, then 1 plus R is 1.09. So if I plug those in, then I have P of T equals 1 point, I'm sorry, my initial population is 35 times 1.09 to the t. Okay, all right, do this one. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got number four. All right, so here's my initial population. It's decreasing at a rate of four, so my rate is negative 0.04. So 1 plus a negative 0 0.04, and that would be 1 minus 0 0.04, would be 0 0.96. So there's my 1 plus r. Okay, so if I've changed my initial population to 24, my 1 plus r to 0.96 to the t. And again, you should put a 0 in front of it so it doesn't look naked. Yeah, and there's my function. Okay, do this one. You're having, so there's your formula. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got, come on, two. 
All right, if you didn't, here we go. We've got an initial mass, so there's my A sub naught, and it's halving every 21 hours, so R is 21. You plug them in, and your function is the initial population. My base is a half because it's halving every 22 hours, so it's X over 21, or T over, I use T. Alright, so now they're going to give me data and they want me to find a formula for the exponential function. Well, your hint box says, one, find A, which is always your y-intercept. And you get a y-intercept when x is zero. So here's when x is zero. So that tells me that A equals negative 5.8. Okay? So I found A. Now I have to find B. You have two choices. This one's new. You're used to this one. You can plug in another ordered pair, any of the other ordered pairs on the list, and solve it for B. Or you can actually just divide Y2 by Y1. But I think I'm going to stick to what we know. So I've got my A. Now I need to find my B. So I'm going to pick another ordered pair. I don't like negatives, so I'm going to pick this one. And I'm going to plug this in for x, this in for y, and this in for a. So in my formula here, I would have my y coordinate, my f of x, is negative 4.64 equals my a, which is negative 5.8, times b to the x. And I picked the x as 1. So to figure out b, all I have to do is divide by negative 5.8 and my b is negative 4.64 divided by negative 5.8 and I get 0.8. So there's my b. Once you have your a and your b, you're ready to write your function. So my function is going to be f of x equals a times b to the x. There's my formula for that set of data. And again, I just want to prove to you, what if I, I, I just want to show you that any ordered pair you picked, what if I picked this one? It's going to be a little more work, okay? But if I plugged it in, I would plug in 2 equals negative 5.8b to the, um, Sorry, this would be y, negative 3.7123b to the x would be b squared. So on this one, to solve it, you're going to have an extra step. I'm going to have to isolate this to kill it, so I'm going to divide by negative 5.8. And if you take negative 3.7123 divided by negative 5.8, you get 0 0.64005172411 equals b squared. And again, I don't like to round until the very end for accuracy. So square root, square root, and b equals, if I just type in the square root of my answer, I get 0.80003232269, which is the same thing as 0 0.8 if I round it. Okay? And if you did the same thing here, again, they're going to be a little trickier because you'd have negative exponents, which means you'd have to move the variable to the bottom and do a bunch of work that way. It can be done, but I would suggest when you're doing this to always pick positive x values. Not that you can't pick the negative ones, it's just the positive ones are easy to figure out. Okie dokie. Alright, so you try this one. Hit pause, come back when you're ready, and hopefully you got two. All right, so the first step is find A, which is your y-intercept. Your y-intercept is when x is zero. So my A is 16.66, okay? Then I have to find my B. Again, if you pick, remember, your function is B to the x. So if I'm looking, pick what exponent you want, and the easiest exponent to deal with is when x is 1, okay? Like I said, you can pick any other point you want, but if you want to get the answer with the least amount of pain, pick an x that's going to be an easy exponent to get rid of, and 1, obviously, is the easiest. 
Okay, so if I pick that ordered pair, I'm going to change my f of x to 11.622. I'm going to change my x to 1 and my a to that. So I would have 11.622 equals my a, which is 16.66, times b to the first. So that way, the only thing I have to do to get b alone is to divide by 16.66. And my base is 11.622 divided by 16.66, and you get 0.6975, blah, 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 blah. And it looks like they're rounding to the nearest tenth, so that 9 would bump it up, which is how they got 0 0.7 equals B. So now that I know my A and my B, plug them in and you've got your function. So my function will be... A, 16.66, times B, 0 0.7, to the X, or T. Usually T, but we're using X. Okie dokie, pretty easy breezy. Alright, same thing here, it's just that instead of giving you a whole bunch of ordered pairs, they only gave you two. The steps are still the same. You need to find your y-intercept. Well, there's where it's crossing the y-axis. So my y-intercept, which is my a, would be 4. And then you plug in the other ordered pair. That's going to be your y, or your f of x, and this is going to be your y. So, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> if I plug in that y, that a and that x, I can solve it for b. So if I change y to 8.05 equals a, which is 4, times b, I don't know, to the x is 5. So now to solve this, I need to get b alone. So I've got to isolate it, which means I'm going to divide by 4, and I get b to the fifth equals 8.05 divided by 4 is 2.0125. Now we have to take the fifth root of both sides. That's going to give me B. And to type this in, you're going to type 5 math. Oh no, yeah, 5 math. And in this case, let me just be sure, you're going to choose choice 5 because that's the x root, and your pick, you, this tells you that the root is 5, and then you type in what you're taking the root of, which is 2.0125, okay, so you hit 5 math 5, and then you type 2.0125, and you get b equals 1.15013, blah, 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 so if I round it to the nearest tenth, my b is... 1.2. So now that I know my A and my B, I can plug them in, and I have a function f of x equals A times B, which is 1.2 to the x. Okay, so you do it just the same, it's just that this time you don't have a choice of the second ordered pair to plug in. You're going to have to plug in the one they give you. Alright, so you try this one, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got, come on, number one. All right, if you did not, let's look at y. There's my y-intercept, so a is three. Here's my other point, my x and my y. So in my population, I have y, well, f of x, whatever, f of x or y equals a b to the x. So I know a, I got to find b. So I need to plug in that and that. And that's why they give me another ordered pair to use. So I'm going to change my f of x to 2.187 equals 3 times b to the third. So then I'm going to isolate b, b and cube root it. So I'm going to divide by 3 first. And that gives me b cubed equals 2.187 divided by 3, which is 0 0.729. Alright, and then to kill the cube, cube we're going to take the cube root of both sides. 
So to do that, you're going to hit 3 math 5.729, and you get 0.9. So B equals 0 0.9. So now that you know A and B, plug them in here and here, and my function is 3 times 0 0.9 to the X. Okie dokie. All right, so describe how exponential growth is used to model real life problems. Well, you find your initial population, your rate, and then you have to find one plus r, right? And then your time, your t is time, and you plug them in to the function y equals a times b to the um, t or x. But your base in this case would be 1 plus r to the t. Sorry. And for 2 it's the exact same thing, it's just that your rate is going to be decreasing instead of increasing. Okay. Alright, so it says determine a formula for the logistic function whose graph is shown. Well, here's your function for the logis there's your lo logistic function. Okay. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to plug in C and the y-intercept so that I can figure out what A is. And the reason we pick the y-intercept is because you get a y-intercept when x is 0. And when I make x 0, that's going to be 1, which is going to cancel and let me find out what A is. Okay. Then 2, you're going to plug in your C and your second ordered pair in order to find B. And then once you find B, you can write your logistic function. So here we go. It says, determine a formula for the logistic function whose graph is shown. So first step says, plug in C in the y-intercept to find A. What the heck is C? Remember, that top number is your limit to growth. In other words, what it can't pass. So my C in this case is 20. My y-intercept is 5. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it says plug in the C and the y-intercept. Sorry, my, my y-intercept is, I should use the whole order pair, my bad. In order to find A. So in my function, I'm going to have f of x equals 20 over, oops, sorry, I'm plugging in my ordered pair. So if I change f of x to y, that's going to be 5 equals 20 over 1 plus a times b to the 0 because I changed x to 0 and I changed c to 20 and I changed this to um, 5. So now do you see how I have everything except for, well I don't have a or b so that's technically still too many letters in my problem to use algebra for but because I picked that y intercept b to the 0 is 1. So what I have is 5 equals 20 over 1 plus a. Now I've got to figure out what a is. So to solve this, I have to eliminate the fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 plus a. On this side, I'm going to get 5 plus 5a equals. On this side, they cancel and I get 20. So now if I solve for a, minus 5 minus 5, 5a equals 15, divide by 5, divide by 5, a equals 3. So, so far I know a and c. All I need now is b, and once I know a, b, and c, I can plug them in and get my function. Okay? So I've got a, I've got c. To find b, it says plug in the c again and the second ordered pair. So you see the second ordered pair that they gave me? I'm going to plug 2 in for x, 10 in for y, c in for 20, a in for 3, and then I'll know everything except for b, and I can solve it, okay, for b. Alright, so if I do that, I'm going to change f of x to 10, c is still 20, 1 plus, I figured out a is 3, times b, which I don't know, and the x that I picked is 2. So, to solve this for b, again, I'm going to have to eliminate the fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 plus 3b squared. 
1 plus 3d squared. This side is going to give me 10 plus 30b squared equals, those cancel, 20. So now if I try and isolate b, I'm going to minus 10, and I get 30b squared equals 10. And then I'm going to divide by 30, and I get b squared equals 1 third. Then I'm going to take the square root, and I get b equals the square root of 1 divided by 3, and you get 0 0.57735 blah 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 blah. I don't know what they want me to round this to. Um, I'm going to go out two places. So that's going to make my b 0 0.58. So now that I know a, b, and c, I can plug them in and that will be my function. So my function is f of x equals um, c is 20 over 1 plus a is 3 times b 0 0.58 to the x or to the t. This generally represents time. Okay, so that would be my function. Alright, so this one says find the logistic function that satisfies the given condition. Okay, it says the initial population was 16. The maximum sustainable population is 128. When they give you the maximum population that you can get, that's always, always, always your C. Your initial population is code for y-intercept. So this is going to be 0, 16. And then this is my other point that it passes through that I use to find B. So step one says plug in C in the y-intercept to find A. So I'm going to change x to 0, y to 16, and C to 28. So y to 16, c to 128, 1 plus uh, a, I don't know, times b, I don't know, to the x, which is 5. Okay? So now I have to solve this for a. So I've got to eliminate the fraction, so I'm going to multiply by 1 t plus a, b to the 5th. And I'm going to multiply this side by 1 plus AB to the fifth. Wait a second, what did I do? Oh, schmo. Sorry, I'm using the wrong order pair. I'm plugging in this one first, which makes this 0. I apologize. Which makes that 1, which makes the bottom just 1 plus A. So I just need to multiply by 1 plus A. Sorry. So on this side, I would have 16 plus 16a equals, these cancel, and it equals 128. So to solve, I'm going to minus 16. I get 16a equals 112, right? Divide by 16, and you get a equals 112 divided by 16 is 7. So I've got my A, I've got my C, all I need now is B, and I can write my function. And to get B, it says, plug in, basically, everything except for B. So that's when you use this other point. So I'm going to change Y to 32, equals my C, 128, over 1 plus 7, B, to the 5th. Now I'm using the 5 for X. Alright, so now we have to solve. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 plus 7b to the 5th. 1 plus 7b to the 5th. That's going to give me 32 plus 32 times 7 is 224b to the 5th equals, on this side they cancel, and I get 128. So now to solve this, I've got to isolate and root. So I'm going to minus 32, minus 32, I get 224b to the 5th equals 128 minus 32 is 96. 
divide by 224 and I get um, sorry, b to the fifth equals 96 divided by 224 and we'll call that 0.42857142866. Again, I don't like to round to the very end because it makes your answer less accurate. So now to kill the fifth root, I mean the fifth degree, I'm going to take the fifth root of both sides. So if I type in 5 math 5 and type in my or just, I'm just going to do second answer and I get 0 0.84412 blah blah blah. Now let's round and let's go to the nearest hundredth which would give me my B is 0 0.84. So now that I have A, B, and C I can plug it in and my function is going to be f of x equals 128 over 3 times 0.84 to the x. Okay, and there's my function. Alright, so you try one, hit pause, come back when you're ready, and hopefully you got three. If not, let's look at y. Okay, so it's got an initial value of 14. That's my y-intercept, so 0, 14. The limit to growth is 84, that means C is 84, and it passes through this point, which is giving me an X and a Y to plug in to find B. So my first step is to plug in C in the Y-intercept. So I would have the Y-intercept is 0, 14. So 14 equals 84 over 1 plus A times B to the 0. And again, that's why we always pick that, because right now, see how we still have two variables? Algebra doesn't work. But b to the 0 is 1, so that gives me 14 equals 84 over 1 plus a. I've got to solve for a, but I've got to get rid of fractions first, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 plus a. That gives me 14 plus 14a. Those cancel equals 84. So to solve for a, I'm going to subtract 14, subtract 14, I get 14a equals 70, divide by 14, divide by 14, and a equals 70, divided by 14, and you get 70 divided by 14, not minus, you get 5. So a equals 5. B equals 84. All I have to do is figure out B now, which is why they give me that other ordered pair. So now I'm going to plug in C, A, and X, and Y. So now I'm going to change Y to 42 equals C is 84 over 1 plus A is 5, B to the first. Okay, so now to solve for B, I'm going to eliminate the fraction, so I'm going to multiply by 1 plus 5b on both sides. And I get 42 plus um, 126. Sorry. Oh yeah, 42 plus 126b uh, equals 84. And now to solve for B, I'm going to subtract 42, subtract 42, I get 126B equals 42, divide by 126, divide by 126, and I get B equals 1 fifth. Let me check, 42 divided by 126, no, I get 1 third. What the heck? Huh. Let me look, let me look, what did I do? Why are they getting one fifth and I'm getting one third? Oh, that's a five, not a three, Tamsin. Oh, good grief. Sorry, 42 times five, I don't know handwriting. 
is 210. So that's 210B. So I'm going to divide by 210. Yeah, there we go. And if we type in 42 divided by 210 and get 0.2, math enter enter, you get 1 fifth. So now that I know A, B, and C, I can write my function. F of X equals C, which is 84, over 1 plus A times B to the X. Okay? So how describe how logistic regression is used to model real life problems. Um, I didn't really do regression. Uh, I mean, we, when you do regressions, typically you're talking about the calculator finding the formula for you. But at any rate, um, can you go back and describe the steps, what we did? In other words, you had to find A by plugging in C and the y-intercept. Then you had to find B and yet you did that by plugging in C, A, and other ordered pair. And then you solve for B. And then finally, you plug in A, B, and C, and you've got your regression equation by hand instead of by calculator. All right, so we are at homework, which means we are done. So happy homeworking, and I will see you next time.